A recent Distinguished Alumni Award recipient, John Jaycox, had childhood dreams to work with airplanes, and those dreams took off as a serious academic pursuit at CSC in the late 1960s. He repeatedly amazed his classmates and faculty with the high quality and detailed design of his projects. The Scotts Bluff native went on to earn a master's degree in aerospace engineering and then entered what would become a distinguished career of more than 30 years in the aerospace industry. John was involved in designing the engines of six cruise missiles and worked with every branch of the military except the Coast Guard. He became acquainted with many of the nation's military and space leaders and spoke at the U.S. Air Force Academy, the Naval Postgraduate School, and numerous aerospace symposiums. Engines that he and his teams designed and tested set records, several of which are still classified and will probably never be broken. John is married to the former Karen Foster, a native of Alliance and a 1976 Shadron State graduate. She has a career with a wealth, wealth management firm. Join me in a warm Shatter State welcome for Mr. John Jaycox. <laughs> this isn't gonna work. First of all, <clears throat> I beg for your patience and your compassion. I've never done this. And uh, I probably won't be allowed to do it again. <laughs> Good morning and congratulations. Very soon you'll receive your diplomas from Shattern State College. Today is absolutely momentous. It is the completion of a very important chapter in your lives and the beginning of the rest of your lives. <clears throat> I'm gonna digress just a moment here. I'm gonna give a shout out to a couple of graduates. I've never met them. Uh, one is the daughter of Tim Bond, a farmer and rancher. Uh, Christine Bond is getting her degree today in uh, human biology and her brother, Aaron Bond is my latest hero. He is a saddle bronc rider, um, and I met them at breakfast this morning. I, I forced myself upon them. Uh, the, other, the other student who is getting her degree today, and please forgive me, I didn't catch your parents' names, is a young woman from Lemon, South Dakota. Her parents actually, I guess that's the mailing address, they actually live in North Dakota. And she is getting her degree in art history and has aspirations of being a, uh, a museum curator. A very important job because curators preserve and catalog the heritage of humanity. As President Ryan mentioned, my name is John Jaycox. I'm a native of Scotts Bluff and graduated from Scotts Bluff Senior High School in 1996. 44 years ago, I received my Bachelor of Arts degree in Mathematics and Physics from Shadron State. My degree was a portal one of three to my career and to the rest of my life. The other two portals were the Master of Science degree in Aerospace Engineering from Texas A&M University and my master's thesis. Shadron State College has produced many fine educators and administrators. It has also produced graduates who became skillful uh, farmers and ranchers, fine doctors and nurses, members of law enforcement, attorneys, business owners, and business executives. This college provided the foundation for others who became scientists and scientific researchers. Finally, CSC has produced professional athletes. Uh, I don't have a very long bucket list. But one of the elements on my bucket list is before I die, I want to meet Danny Woodhouse. More than just shake his hand, I want a conversation with him. I have great admiration for that man. I could be unique, though, in that I may be the only CSC graduate who became a weapons engineer. My career consisted of two chapters. The first chapter, the weapons engineer. The second chapter, 
the technical proposal writer. My career in the defense aerospace industry spanned nearly 33 years. I began my career as a propulsion engineer at Pratt Whitney Aircraft, now just Pratt Whitney, and retired as a senior manager at Rolls-Royce Aircraft Engines. During my aerospace career, I was involved in the aerodynamic testing of strategic bombers and land-based and submarine-launched ballistic missiles. In the parlance of the industry, they're called crowd pleasers. I also spent years in the development of digital computer simulations of high-performance turbine engines for bombers and fighter aircraft. Most of my career, however, was focused on the management of programs for the design, development, and fielding of turbine engines for cruise missiles, as well as advanced technology development for fighter, bomber, and cruise missile engines. During my aerospace career, I worked with every U.S. airframe manufacturer who was involved with advanced fighters, bombers, missiles, and turbine-powered reconnaissance and target drones. I also worked with foreign manufacturers of tactical missiles and target drones. I worked with every department in the Department of Defense, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and briefly with the Central Intelligence Agency and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Uh, when I say with, that doesn't mean that I drew a paycheck from them. Uh, I was working for companies and my job responsibilities required that I work with, with uh, those entities. During my career, I became acquainted with high-level executives of the Department of Defense, the NASA, and U.S. and foreign aerospace companies. I can count among my acquaintances, generals and admirals, and other high-ranking officers, U.S. congressmen, and a raft of fighter, bomber, and reconnaissance pilots and astronauts. I didn't fall into this. I wanted this. <laughs> During my aerospace career, I never once worked on a civilian project. I re retired from the defense aerospace industry in 2007. Shortly after retiring, a large Indianapolis-based machine shop approached me to assist them in managing manufacturing programs and other activities. When they discovered that I was skilled in writing complex, high-value proposals to U.S. government agencies, proposal writing became my sole focus. From 2008 until recently, I have written over 500 proposals, responses to requests for information and expressions of interest. I've written proposals to companies and government agencies in a diverse range of industries, and my efforts have resulted in the award of more than a billion dollars worth of work. None of this would have been possible if it hadn't been for my education. My decision to come to Shadron was based on affordability and familiarity. As I was paying for most of my education, I could afford Shadron, and I was familiar with the school as both my mother and one of my older sisters received bachelor's and master's degrees in education from here. <clears throat> My sister, who received a bachelor's and master's, then went on to receive a PhD. My wife, Karen, who's sitting down here, uh, also received her degree from Shadron. Man, did I luck out. For me, Shadron was perfect. The environment at Shadron had few distractions, and the ones that were here, I swept from my mind. I only went to class, ate, studied, and slept. Wake up, get up, show up, stay up. I came here focused on getting an education, nothing more and absolutely nothing less. My time at CSC was an investment that was absolutely critical to my future. Since before the age of four, I have had an intense, almost obsessive interest in things that fly. I don't care what it is. It can be a Mach 4 aircraft, it can be a dragonfly. I'm interested. Near the end of my first semester at CSC, I decided to become an engineer. An odd decision, considering that I had taken only one semester of mathematics and one semester of chemistry in high school. Also, I didn't know any engineers, and I had no clue as to what they did. 
Although CSC did not have an engineering curriculum, it did have ex excellent curricula in mathematics and the sciences and a drafting course, all of which I would need to pursue my engineering aspiration. My STEM education began right here. I went to college during the Vietnam War, a time when there was a compulsory draft. The way it worked was that if you were a young man and if you were in college and if you were getting passing grades, then you were assured of being deferred from the draft for four years. In the fall of 69, after my third year at CSC, I'd already burned up uh, three years or six semesters in a, in a summer session. <clears throat> I enrolled in the Bachelor of Science Aerospace Engineering curriculum at Texas A&M. I went to A&M from Shadron with a GPA greater than 3.8. I had only two semesters left on my term deferment, so I needed to finish my education before I would be drafted. It didn't bother me to either be drafted or go to war, but it did bother me that these might happen before I finished my degree. I needed to successfully complete six semesters of study to finish the, engineering, uh, the aerospace engineering degree, and after examining a ms aerospace engineering curriculum, it appeared to me that the degree requirements could be completed in just two semesters. <laughs> I'm crazy smart. If I took, in two semesters, if I took extreme overloads both semesters, the first semester I signed up for 21 hours or seven courses. That was the light semester. These courses included senior level required courses, their junior level prerequisites, and sophomore level qualifying courses for the prerequisites. It was a really stupid thing to do. Very quickly, I was failing in several courses from which I was unable to recover. That semester, I posted a GPA of 1.8 and was put on academic probation. My dream of being an aerospace engineer would have to wait. It wasn't too hard to figure out that the shortest path to completion of a bachelor's degree, now in at least mathematics, led back to Shadron. In mid-January 1970, following my last final exam at A&M, I drove straight through from College Station, Texas, a 26-hour trip to Shadron and enrolled on the last day of late registration for the spring semester. Uh, I immediately went to class, I was tired, War, uh, from the gruel, uh, the grind at, at uh, Texas A&M, the uh, worn out from the road in the trip back, went to a, a class over in Memorial Hall, and uh, I don't know what it was. There's something, something set me off. Maybe it was the color of white paper. And I shot off my mouth. Um, there was a beautiful, young, blonde-haired woman sitting up at the front of the class with two of her classmates, and she spun around and challenged me, startled me. She would become my wife. As I said, it, uh, I lucked out. Later that spring, I requested a fifth year extension to my deferment because I wasn't going to finish my degree in four years. And to my dismay, dismay, but to my delight, it was granted. With that good fortune, I threw myself into completing a second major in physics. I wasn't going to be here for five years and leave with one major. Despite the setbacks, I graduated from Shadron at the very top of my class. I was inducted into Kappa Mu Epsilon and Lambda Delta Lambda National Mathematics and Physics Honoraries, Who's Who in American Colleges and Universities, and Alpha Phi Sigma, Sigma National Scholastic Honorary. As I said, I'm, <clears throat> I'm scary smart, so in the fall of 1971, I returned to Texas A&M to pursue a master's 
degree in aerospace engineering. I was returning to the, Daniel was returning to the lion's den. Only different, difference was the lion knew me by first name. In the spring of 1974, completion of all coursework and my master's thesis, I've received my degree. In addition to 14 job offers, 12 from aerospace companies and two unsolicited non-aerospace offers. I've always been surprised at that, considering that three years earlier I was on academic probation and I was written off as just being sort of an idiot. My education did not end there. To strengthen my career, I continued to take engineering courses and completed the coursework requirements for a PhD in aerospace engineering. In retrospect, coming to Shadron State College was one of the very best decisions that I have ever made. From Shadron, I received a solid education, a relevant, empowering degree, and I found my wife. These things set in motion the events that, I've, that have colored the rest of my life and have fostered my subsequent, any subsequent success that have I, I have enjoyed. I'm not going to share with you kind of a philosophy. Uh, Mark Twain, the noted American author, observed, the two most important days in our lives are the day we are born and the day we find out why. Think about it. Last Christmas, my wife Karen and I assembled a 1,500-piece jigsaw puzzle. When we opened the box, our eyes were met with a mound of many irregular pieces, many which were face up, some that we could see an image on of a tiny portion of the puzzle, and many that were face down, and all that was visible was a, a green background. We dumped the pieces out on a, our dining room table, turned the pieces right side up, and using the box as a guide, we sorted the pieces into groups representative of the puzzle features visible on the box lid. Many of the pieces could not be associated with a distinct feature because they were part of a relatively, relatively uniform background. Following the sort, we found the uh, puzzle's edge pieces, and again, using the box lid, we positioned the edge pieces in the approximate location where they should be in the puzzle. Some of the pieces were quite large, others not so large, some were small, and many seemed almost inconsequential. In fact, I thought we ought to just throw these things out, they're unimportant. Each and every regular shaped piece was unique to assemble, the, to assemble the puzzle. We took each piece and using the box as a guide, we found its approximate location in the puzzle and then fitted it in place. To properly fit, each puzzle had to be in its exact location and its exact orientation. It took us weeks to assemble that puzzle. Here's the takeaway from this. Each of us is a puzzle piece, and as such, each of us is absolutely unique. I relish the fact that of more than 7.1 billion inhabitants of this planet right now, I'm the only one of me. Furthermore, I never preceded myself, you never preceded yourselves, and I will never succeed myself. None of you will succeed yourselves. The only way that the continuum of mankind can properly function is, is that each of us find our fits. Now the nature of mankind is, it's got a lot of slot, a lot of bandwidth. So you can go out and do your thing and not fit, and it just functions. Not well, but it gets by. I believe that much of the unhappiness, the discord, and the mayhem of the world is caused by people not being in the right place and the right position. They haven't found their fit. As a teenager, I struggled with my life's purpose. The way I approached my studies at Chadron is a reflection of that struggle. When I came here, I found literally a, 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 a smorgasbord of knowledge. 
I enrolled in a broad range of classes with the intent of doing the very best that I could do in each class to wring the most out of them so that I could find my fit. It wasn't that I wanted an A. I wanted to know everything that was in that class. My time at Shadron was very serious. Following graduation from CSC, I still struggled to find my life's purpose, and in desperation, I played my trump card. I prayed. I prayed that God, the holder of the box lid, would put my foot on the path that he wanted me to follow, not the path that I may have wanted to follow. I didn't know where I was going. And you'll find out, Lewis Carroll, this, in, in, uh, in his uh, Alice in Wonderland, in, in Through the Looking Glass, there's a passage where Alice is meeting with the Cheshire Cat, and she asks the Cheshire Cat for directions as to where they might, might she, she should go. And he says, where do you want to go? And she says, I don't know. And he comes back and says, well, for those who don't know where they're going, any path will get them there. In addition, I prayed for his approval of the young woman whom I wished to marry. I hadn't done that. The answer to those prayers set the course of the rest of my life. Following a late night, physically and emotionally grueling prayer session in a darkened church, which culminated, and I went there in desperation. I was, I, I, I didn't know the answer. Which culminated in hours of weeping and sobbing, sobbing I received a spoken reply, reply to my prayers. Do not be afraid, all will work out. That's all I got. On Monday, I enrolled in the master's program uh, at Texas A&M in aerospace engineering. And in December, I married Karen Foster, who, as I mentioned, I met at Chadron. Mike Smith, who was the best man in, in my wedding, is sitting next to her. You know, I've, I've always been envious of Mike. He is scary smart. We have been married for more than 43 years. Uh, not long before we got married, my guardian angel quit on me. Uh, we were engaged, and my guardian angel left because there wasn't anything he could do. Not that I was incorrigible, but I, this young woman who I was going to marry was doing his job and then a bunch of other things. I'm fortunate. I married my guardian angel. I've shared with you highlights of my career and some of my struggles. The promise that, I, that was made to me in that dark church the night of 21 August 1971 has been kept. Indeed, for me, all has worked out. Where the will of God will take you, the grace of God will protect you. You will not find that in the Bible. I don't know where it comes from, but boy, is it true. How will you know when you find your fit? You will find contentment in your life. You will be good at what you do, you do, and your peers will recognize you for it. Your fit will easily rest on your shoulders. It will feel comfortable. You will have a positive impact on people's lives. You will make a difference. Fame and fortune may be consequences of finding your fit, but they are not guaranteed. President Ryan and Shattern State College have truly honored me with this opportunity to address you today. Thank you for your time and your patience, and again, congratulations on your accomplishments. Thank you. Meet me afterwards uh, for your pay. A uh, couple of last thoughts. Finally, broadly par paraphrasing the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 13. He who perseveres is saved. There is something that you're going to get the opportunity to do every day and possibly several times a day, which will be the hardest thing that you will ever do. 
You cannot resist the opportunity or the desire not to do it. Do not quit. The hardest, the easiest thing that you will ever do, but you, and you only do it once, is quit. So when you want to throw in the towel, you just wrap it around your neck, dig in, go to work. Now, find your fit. Thank you.